Hello, and welcome back to Rogue Trader. We've set down on this here snowy planet. Oh, listen to that echo. There appears to be Necrom stuff here. This looks dangerous, but I guess we gotta go. We're looking for Ulfar's pack. I sense something nearby. Oh? Both strong and wise is Ulfar. Huh. Versus Vindication. A one-handed... It's a melta pistol. That does fuck off damage and... I'm sorry, let me... You could. I might be real, I don't use the flamer all that often. In addition, Ulfar has... How about we make your secondary kit... Something like this. Is that a good idea? I don't know. Do I have any other... One hand, that's worse. Worse. Do I have any power swords, perhaps? Nope. Power claymore. Two-handed. Um, uh, two-handed. Nope. I mean... In case you end up in melee, which does happen every now and then. It's not supposed to be a challenge, no. Can someone? I don't know what that's supposed to be. Scouts discovered Ulfar's lifeless body here. That's a problem. Oh, look at that. Now here's the thing. He was attacked by something with claws. We're so seeing all this Necron shit. Uh, could be dealing with uh, what are they called? Fl flayers, flayed ones, flay me. The guys who who cut skin to put on themselves because they're crazy. The crazy necrons. Uh, but I'm also curious if we could be dealing with Wolfen. This is an issue though. One, two, three, four, five. Six distinct space marine bodies is an issue. That shouldn't be. Tracks of the mysterious enemy that defeated the space wolf has almost been hidden by the snow. Almost. I better myself through my service. No eyes on any enemies yet. Duty prevails. I'm still new to the art. You're not new to the art of exploring. We've been playing this video game for like 135 hours or something. That's a spawn point. Do a little quick save, cause we're gonna be ambushed. You know it, baby. Gonna get ambushed. This has uh, similar design elements to the like orcs or whatever that Necrons have. And here's the cutscene trigger. <clears throat> I 
My brothers! Red brows furrow in anguish. Ulfur bows down over the bodies encased in ceramite and adamantine. Once again, fate has barred me from traveling to the hall of the Old Father with my brothers. And a look around. The snow covered battlefield reveals little, but it is clear that the wolves gave furious battle one last time. The rocks are pitted from bolter strikes, and there are, and here and there you see scorch marks left by plasma charges. Nothing about gorse. Who are they fighting? I smell no corruption on their bodies, and I see no traces of Xeno's weapons. I think they did battle with humans here. Huh. What do you think they were looking for here? I do not know what they were seeking, but they certainly found someone here. Otherwise this crime would not have been committed. They met their doom with honor, as befits true warriors. Ulfur huffs a weak laugh. True enough. No one would dare say that the baleful howl would stare into the eyes of Morkai with anything but joyful awe and fire in the hearts. He... Heaving in, heaving in a breath, Ulfur mutters, I sense evil in their deaths. The souls, of the, the souls of the baleful howl are not at rest, but remain here on the battlefield. They are not with the old father. I must escort them to him. Will you bear witness to the last honor given to my brothers? I, I mean, because he trusts me, I assume? What are you going to do? I will sing their sagas, so that the world remembers who they were. Then the flames will take their bodies, and we will drink to the memory of my pack to ease their march to Kjalhalla. Kjalhalla. Why me? Our sagas have long since become one, and tradition bids that the burial be witnessed by another clan member, not an outsider. I have no one closer than you here. Yeah. Perhaps we should return their bodies to Fenris. There is no point now. If they had died recently, and if I were a wolf priest, I would have armed myself with the fang of Morkai and extracted their progenoids, the, impl oh. the implants containing the memory of the old father's blood. On Fenris, they would have been transplanted into young wolves, and the valor of my bro brothers would have lived on in them. But their bodies have lain here too long, so they should simply be given to the flames, to protect them against scavengers and unworthy hands. Then I shall bear witness to their final honor. Ulfur produces a knife inscribed with scarlet runes. Picking up a rock from the ground, it begins to scratch the rock's sharp edges across the blade, etching a name. His powerful voice m rumbles. Hear now the saga of the baleful howl pack, proud warriors of Fenris, uh, Vulca Fenrica. The verses weave together, recounting the deeds of each of Ulfar's dead brothers. With incredible precision and in, in every detail, the wolf lists the accomplishments of his comrades, the enemies they slew, and the sacrifices they made. The saga continues at length, and the relentless rhythm sends you into a trance. With a grinding screech, the rock is drawn across the knife blade again and again, inscribing one name after the other. On the cold world they gave battle, the pack's fierce name, never disgracing. So ends the saga of the baleful howl, and the void thunders with echo unending, Fenris Yolda. Ulfar is silent for a long time. Uh, the etched blade slices across his huge palm, and drop, scarlet drops paint the snow. His weary voice rasps. Hear my oath, old father. Yelgadura Agyumia. That seems like nonsense to me. Uh, as in not actually a Nordic language. Or even old Norse. With his bloodied hand, the wolf resumes the rune-covered horn, removes the rune-covered horn from his belt, and from a flask pours something dark and sharp smelling into it. Let us drink to my brothers, Atfater, and then we build the pyre. What oath did you just swear? It is the oldest oath on Fenris. 
It translates, I will avenge or I will be forsaken. Yelgatura. Ah, yeah. Can't really. Doesn't seem like a real language or even a properly structured fake language. What is that? Point of the horn. Usually wolves are commemorated with mud, but I'll have to settle for something I made myself. A few poisonous herbs from Janus. Some rare toxins traded on footfall. Maybe this brew will overcome the physical might of an Astartes. He smiled sadly. How I wished that my omen would prove a lie, and that my libation would sour without ever being tasted. It sounds like you are... Like you are asking me to drink poison. I am not a madman. It has strong brew, but it will not kill you. It shouldn't, at least. But it may envelop your mind in a haze of dreams. Do not believe everything you see. The visions may have been sent by the Old Father, or by someone less worthy. Why would we drink that? Custom. Back when Lehman Ross was still young, and did not yet know the Old Father, he found himself in the lost village of the Wave Ra Raiders clan. Oh man, this is when I, where I wish I had actually read the uh, Space Wolf books from the Horus Heresy series. I haven't. I've read a couple of Space Wolf stories, but not with Ross in them. They had all been slain by monsters, and their souls will now wander the ruins of their homes, crying out for vengeance. Lehman Ross could not speak to the dead, comfort them, or grant them peace, because he was alive, and they were not. Then he brew a mixture of poisoned herbs and drank himself almost to death. The light in his eyes faded, and the figures of the dead appeared before him in the darkness. Ross swore an oath to, of vengeance before them, and the fire of resentment in their hearts went out. We have been giving our dead the same send-off ever since. Uh, this seems like a bad idea. I'm probably gonna get like a debuff and then Necrons are gonna spawn or some bullshit. Still, I'm gonna do it. Man, I've been. My character has been sober through like most of this video game. I'm gonna accept the horn and sip. Feast well, wolves. Oh dear. The astringent liquid burns your throat, and a fog immediately descends over your vision. The sky darkens, and the rising wind whistles in your ears. Though it comes, uh, through it comes the high-pitched cawing of a bird. Ulfar nods approvingly. It is a sign. Fate walks behind us. Skål! Uh, taking back his horn, the wolf takes a mighty swallow of the stuff. Uh, majestic shadows rise in the snowy haze around you. The figures of warriors clad in indestructible armor, bearing an emblem of two black fangs uh, piercing the yellow of the sun. They are looking at you. Oh, that's kind of cute. You see axes, chain swords. The brothers bear witness, which means it is time for us to meet my last comrade. What, comrade? There is one missing among... Yeah, Wolfen. We're gonna... Is, is Wolfen, probably. There is one missing among the dead, and, I, and now I know who I was fighting before. It was Brother Ignilf. What happened to this Ignilf? He went mad with grief over the bodies of his brothers, and the curse of the Wolfen prevailed over his valiant heart. He became a beast. Is he dangerous, or will you be able to reason with him? I know, but let's ask anyways. There is no reasoning with one who knows only the black bitterness of hatred. The curse of the wolfen is not only our bane, but also our shield against temptation. When intolerable thoughts take shelter in a wolf's mind, the curse comes and drives them out, dousing them with waters of anger. You cannot reason with a wolfen, or deceive him, or entice him. That is our bloody talisman against evil. And what are we going to do with them? Corruption is washed away by blood. 
We will cleanse his spirit, as there is no hope for his body now. None return from the curse's embrace. Calcasar once encountered one of my brothers, who had also become a wolfen. Calcasar captured him and brought him to Fenris. That is debt we came here to pay. But we have no way of doing what Calcasar did, so we will have to grant Brother Ignilf peace. Yeah, I'm not gonna suggest that. I see. The wolf moon raises its head and howls. Uh, then it turns its wise, piercing gaze on you, and blood rains down from its snow-white fangs onto the frozen world. Where do you intend to look for him? A toothy grin is the only response you receive. You see fangs lengthening before your eyes. Is it Ulfar laughing at you, or the feral moon suspended in the sky? The fog clouding your mind grows thicker. He will come. Fine, let's do it. Ulfar lets out a belligerent howl, whipping out snowdrifts into frightened whirlwinds. You hear a terrible cracking sound. Someone's feet, no, paws, are breaking through the crust of the snow on the ground. The beast now comes, and its cruel howl awakens the fallen warriors of Fenris. What? The fuck is going on? Okay, fine. Mm. Yeah, people in the way. Let me move everyone. Uh, that's an issue, but we'll deal with it. Where do we put our gentles? Put her here. And Ulfar. I'm gonna need to leave some options open. Quick save. I don't know how I feel about this. We're fighting ghosts. And nobody never said nothing about talking to ghosts. And we're fighting them. Uh, I kind of want to fall back real far. No, actually, let, let me put the rear out first. I'll have to do... And this noise is real spooky. Two spooky, five, three spooky, five me. Kill some. Eagle eyed. Oh. Okay. Wait, three? What about these guys? I'm not sure why they're they're not active. Shouldn't shouldn't complain though. But that means this guy is tougher. Maybe send Ulfar towards him if we can get this guy out of the way fast enough. He's got decent armor. Um, so let's change that. Analyze. Expose. I don't see a preview for his health bar. I guess we'll just take the shot. He did take damage. I don't know why it's not showing me, but he did take damage. Acacia. I think Iliad might be able to kill this guy. Like, immediately. So I'm gonna do 
this first. Aim for the opening. He explodes. And you get a, an extra shot on him. Which is real nice. Okay, I think that was good. Move the front line. I'm gonna put it like that. Do you have range on him? You do. And then I can do this. Hopefully. I mean, he should be dead by next turn. That's slightly too far away. Unfortunate. And I wonder how this is going to sound in the recording. That This might be very, very uncomfortable to listen to. Not much to do about it, though. I have no idea how much damage we're looking at here. But I'm gonna take the shot either way. Dead? Yes. And I can do this. And I can do that. Which is not quite enough. But... 61. Let me just... Uh, should I actually... That's going to hit, guaranteed. Let me just press the advantage, see what happens. Kill. Not quite a kill. How about we run and gun? And then we just see what happens with this. Okay, and now they, these guys activate. Three. This guy is gonna, oh shit, that guy is gonna go. That's not the best. I'm gonna try this. Hopefully Cassia doesn't look at too closely at Argenta. We did remove one guy. Something. We oh, can't see him. Shame. Okay, here's where we see if this guy just. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this on. Switch the weapon sets. I don't know if that actually does much. Oh, Jai. Get, oh, because of the thing. Oh well, that's actually excellent then, because she can do this for her. bonus thing. And then Ulfar. Apparently that doesn't work. Shame. Oh, fuck off. I'll have to go around like this then. Keep shooting. Keep firing, assholes. Can do it again. Okay, they didn't make a uh, wolfen uh, model. 
unfortunate. Uh, recorded by Arch Cr Arch Chronicler. Uh, Olkert Memistat. Oral retelling of Onvul Ulfar and his brothers, the Baleful Howl. Saga. And On the Last Wolf, verse. My verses you will hear, glorious brothers, of how the paths of Ulfar, called Thunderlung from the first, and the last wolf of the Baleful Howl were intertwined. Over his brother's cold body standing, Ulfar the hard arm proclaimed to the sky their glorious sagas, and his last homage paid to those warriors proud, as his witness taking his companion of the line von Valancius. Uh, the blizzard was raging, and the wind furiously howling, as under that terrible clawed paw. Hmm. This is curious, I'm not sure. The old fourth is called to summon to battle against the beast. This is interesting, so I'm gonna go with this. The Old Father's Call, two summoned to battle against the beast. You did not fear to meet me, perfidious spirit, who the name Doppelgrendel claims. I see you have not learned from the last battle, though you paid for it with gouged eye. So spoke Ulfar Thunderlong, and the beast replied, Of your spoils you boasted to the priests in vain, Ulfar ever lost. My body alone you wounded, but I your spirit maimed, and your word crippled. Uh, then came the turn of, of the Etvater to speak. And turn the two wolves away from the empty shedding of blood. If he can speak, I mean. But it is not given to us to change fate's weaving. The children of Fenris hungered for mortal combat. Enough words have been spoken. The power of words spewed from the beast's mouth grinning, and the cry of the wild hunt, and the embittered souls hearkened. Out of snow and wind, wolf bodies were woven. For the warriors who died an unclean death, the unavenged evil never forgetting. Their eyes fangs gnashing, they approached into the roiling sky howling. The first brother by Ulfa was wa vanish, vanquished. Fuck. Uh, uh, with the second he clashed the Etfather as his shield. Then with laugh booming, the heavens were split by the formidable Ulfar his battle friends guarding. With a mighty wrench, the wolf's jaw he tore, opening them wide, the evil charms banishing. With dignity was met each brutal strike, and with savagery was slain each deadly foe. And the pack is defeated. But the beast was not yet vanquished. Roaring his body he threw into the fray, like a mighty spear thrust. Howling, his claws cut through the adamantine. The warriors fought, a river of blood spilling. Ulfar Thunderlung, his, uh, his battle song is singing. The black curse is vicious rival echoing. Then warriors were clashing when the cunning Etvater. Okay, so this... Uh... I think I'll try my logic, actually. A sliver of weakness sighted in the foe's armor. A weakness spying in the strong armor joints, the Etfater to Ulfar a sign gave that a ruthless, ruthless blow he could strike, his knife drawing and a harsh cry unleashing. Thunderlong plunged the blade into the insidious spirit's foul flesh. To his knee the beast fell, and suddenly, about his gray lips, a smile played of guile and fear. Upon the Etfater fell the wolf's fiery gaze. By the power of icy Fenris, I do curse you. If you look into the past, you shall see only deceit. If you look into the future, you shall see only treachery. 
The false friend's dagger shall open your breast. The arrows of deceits wrought shall pierce your back. So spoke the Atfater, the spirit born in sorrow cursing, and then the bloody wound she spied. Her breast was cut, her heart was quiet, the Atfater's death had caught her unawares. Huh. From the Atfater's lip, Lips, a daring song burst forth, death on the battlefield extolling. The heat of these words, the Atfather's heart inflamed, the spirit's fatal vision banishing. Glory to brave hearts that fear not death. In its death rasp, the Doppelgrendel answered, Brother, we were doomed not by the archenemy's followers, nor by the despicable inhumans who did not touch our armor. Nor with dark sorcery did the malefics defeat us. No, it was the humans who, so, who oaths of friendship swore that plunged the blade into our back. Uh, their treacherous plot in malice hatched, said the spirit, and then, in, and then it fell silent forever, the noble wolf's body fleeing, and peace to it bestowing. The pair stood together over the prostrate body, the body not of a beast, but of a brave fallen brother. The fearsome wolf had declared an oath of vengeance, and the mighty wolves to Kjalhalla went charging. They went knowing that from their betrayers three times the blood prize would be extracted. Exacted even. And the Etfater also s her peace spoke. Who killed your brothers? From this day forth, who is our foe? I think I know, but let's do it anyway. Endo? Why did I say that one word in Swedish? The traitor's name for now remains unknown, but in the darkness I will find him, and have my vengeance. So answered Thunderlung. And yet father also has peace spoke. The honor of Fenris you have defended, Ulfa Thunderlong. My brothers, the old father's hall entering, will boldly tell that in death they have not been forgotten. With a joyous roar, these words they will answer, for they will surely mean that fierce Fenris still stands. So Ulfa's mighty word was spoken. A proud funeral dirge was sung. His brother's weary body, cursed by grief, from his carapace was freed, and laid upon the pyre. The old spinners weave the weird thread cruelly, no inquiries or entreaties accepting. Ulfa Thunderlong cast his gaze, and clearly he beheld the end of his trail. Ooh. Helmet! And so ended the saga of the Baleful Howl. May the Black Mane guide them to Kjalhalla. Only one was not claimed by Morkai the Dark-Hearted. Wolf of Thunderlung stood stalwart upon the ground. Too stubborn for death was this rebellious wolf, too hot to be seized by the chill of the grave. His brothers praising, he raised his deadly axe. Fenris stands, so there will many yet to slay. Was there room in Ulfar's heart for sorrow? So it was. But anguish does not plague the warrior's soul. He knew one day his brothers he would meet again. Once the curse was broken and his honorable death he claimed in battle. Glory to the fierce wolf, son of Fenris. Let us remember, brothers, the baleful howl, daring hunters, fierce fighters, and troublemakers without equal. Let us glorify their exploits and glorify their fall. With honor have these wolves gone to Kjalhalla. Let us remember the mighty brother Ulfar, who did not abandon his pack in the snowy wastes. Let us remember the trader of the von Valancius line, she whose name is known and honored on Fenris. Let us raise our cups and cry into the face of Hellwinter's gale. Father, we live still. Fenris Yelda. So that was kind of difficult to understand exactly what happened.
but I think I got the gist of it, and I, and I, I that was pretty good. Why did I go to the? I'm not sure why I went here, but I'll I'll go here all the same. Probably see if I can't speak a word or two to Ulfar. That was a pretty good ending to his little quest line there. Wolfen. Digger knobs. That's stupid. I shouldn't be. <laughs> now. Blood Craven. Less damage from psychic abilities. When the wearers of psychic abilities, the absorbed and redirected. Yeah, even if it wasn't like story armor. Ah, uh, look at look at that shit. We got the wolf shit on the back. We got the big wolf championship belt. Did he have that on the other armor? I'm not sure. Let me just. Yeah, I did, but now it's in gold. Get the runes. Get the little teeth. On the knee, we got the basically the Aquila. We got the fur again. I'm still not sure how I feel about these little fur patches on the shoulders, but I guess they're supposed to like blend in with this. It's okay. And let us not forget. Hell yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. It's a Mark Seven helm. I would have really uh, liked to actually be able to afford that, uh, or rather, get in, get my reputation high enough to get that Mark Six helm. This is pretty decent. This is a pretty good look. Um, I'm digging. Digging it. Now. Didn't I change your gear? Oh well. Something has changed in Ulfar, as though a burden that has weighed over him ever since your first meeting is finally gone. There is a serenity in his heart's features that there never was before. He bows with you with respect. I wish to express once again my sorrow for your fallen brothers. Thank you. Their stories will not be forgotten, but will live on in the chapter's legends. We wolves do not fully die. We leave to hunt in Kjalhala. And one day, we will return to this world for the final battle. Glorious will be the day when we brothers are reunited. What will you do now, last of your pack? The pack is no more. I could become a lone wolf. An avenger of the fallen. But my heart yearns for something else. I have missed the company of the warriors of Fenris. When we finish your business here, I will seek out Thorvald Ironhide and accept his generous offer. Mm. I will bind myself to ties of blood brotherhood to the Stormbiters. My duty to the Allfather is not yet fulfilled. Do you still believe in the power of the curse upon you? The curse is strong. There is no doubt about that. But my spirit is stronger than a doppelgrindle. <clears throat> I overcame one in combat. So can I not overcome its magic? No. One day I will find the glorious death on the field of battle. Very well. 
Tell me, what gave you the strength to resist giving in to despair? Do you remember when I was overcome with rage in the wreathing tempest spire? And you reminded me who I was supposed to be fighting for. I do. When I told you of the death of my brother, Sarnorf and Skjaldi, you paid tribute to their valor. And for a moment, I felt as if I were back home on Fenris. And I wanted to return there. When we stood over the body of my brother, Ignilf, you spoke two words. You brought my home back to my mind. And then I knew that I was not ready to abandon all hope of seeing it once more. Your counsel, Edvetter, it is what gave me strength. That is about the highest praise a human can receive from a space marine. I saw strange things during the battle. Was it a mirage or warp influence? Dreams brought on by Njord mixed with reality and the spells of the Doppelkrindle. How can I say what was true and what was a mirage? Were we fighting against the spirit? Or against my deranged brother? Did the ghosts of the fallen rise up beside us to weigh our valor on the scales of honor? Or did the drug make us do battle with the wind? It is all true, Edvater. Or perhaps none of it was. The people of Fenris have long known how thin the line between what is real and what is legend. And we were in a legend. Mm. It's almost... Almost feels like commentary, commentary on the canon, as it were. Oh well. You have fulfilled your duty. I congratulate you. I could not have done it without you, Edvater. Know that, now and always, you will have friends on Fenris. Again, a high praise. Now get the fuck out of my retinue. No, I'm kidding. Fenris Yolda. Fenris, Fenris Yolda. There we go. I'm not sure how much in terms of like companion quests we have left. But when we get back, I believe there's a few Drukhari ships hanging out that we can go mess with. I will see you next time. Or maybe it was Necroships. I will see you next time regardless. See you later.